Once a geological model has been created, five subfolders become available under the geological model heading. In this video, we will review these different folders which contain all the information that comprise the model as well as the modeled volumes and demonstrate how to add a custom boundary to the model. The contents of the boundary folder control the size and shape of the model. To check how the boundary is currently being defined, click the triangle next to the boundary subfolder. In this example, I have previously specified a topography surface as well as the extents of the model, which are based on the geology drilling table. To make any changes to the boundary, double click on the boundary subfolder. The model extents can be changed and the use topography checkbox can be deselected. The boundary can be easily modified and customized at any time during the modeling process by adding a new base, such as a basement unit, or a new lateral extent, such as a project boundary, both of which can be built from polylines, GIS lines, points, or structural data created in LeapFrog or by importing data that represents the desired boundary. A new base allows you to define the bottom vertical extent of a geological model, while a new lateral extent allows you to define the XY extents of the model. I will add a new project boundary to this model by right-clicking the boundary filter and selecting New Lateral Extent from GIS Vector Data. I'll select my imported GIS line boundary and use a vertical wall projected from the line. In some cases, like this one, you may end up with the exact opposite volume that you were expecting, but there is a simple fix. Simply right-click on the new boundary object in the project tree and select Swap Inside. Once the model reprocesses, we will see our intended boundary. Bases and lateral extents can be edited and turned off or on as required by double-clicking the boundary subfolder and ticking or unticking the checkboxes. They can also be removed from the model entirely if necessary by simply right-clicking it and selecting Delete. Below the boundary folder, the Fault System folder is where faults can be added to the model. Many faults can be added and set up to terminate against one another as necessary. Once the faults have been added and activated, the geological model will be split into multiple submodels. There are no faults in this demonstration project, but more information can be found about faulting geological models in the LeapfrogWorks help or by contacting a local office. The Lithologies folder contains the lithologies available for modeling, which come directly from the base lithology column that you selected when your model was created. In the previous video, I selected the Group Lith column as the base lithology column, so it's the column of data being used. The hyperlink will take you to that item in the project tree. Additional lithologies can be added to the model if necessary by simply double-clicking lithologies and adding the new ones. The Surface Chronology folder is where most of the modeling occurs and will be the focus of the next few videos. To build a new surface, right-click on the Surface Chronology folder. Each of these different surface types is suited to modeling a different type of surface with different geometries and cutting relationships. The functionality and purpose of each different surface type is discussed in the help and in the subsequent video. While these surface types have geologically specific names, such as deposit, erosion, intrusion, and vein, their underlying functionality can be used to model any type of categorical data, including weathering, alteration, geotechnical zones, structural information, and more. Lastly, the Output Volumes folder will contain the closed interlocking volumes, which are generated by clipping the above surfaces created in the Surface Chronology folder against one another in a geologically reasonable way. Right now, there is only an unknown volume, the shape of the overall model boundary available in the Output Volumes folder, as no surfaces have been created or activated yet. The Output Volumes folder itself has no functionality, as volume generation and edits are done directly onto the surfaces in the Surface Chronology folder, and the resulting volumes simply reside in this folder.